up, Greeks? We are back at it. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to talk with you once again about Dr. Martin Luther King and some of the great things he was able to accomplish throughout the years. Uh, one of the quotes that I wanted to choose today goes like this. One has a moral responsibility to disobey unjust laws. Uh, Dr. King was a master at disobeying unjust laws. Um, Dr. King was in a situation where he was arrested at least 30 times. Um, I don't believe that all 30 times Dr. King was disobeying anything unjust in some of those cases. And I'll highlight some of those different things that uh, Dr. King was dealing with and some of the different ways that he went about change. Uh, I do know at one point in time Dr. King was going 30 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone and he was arrested for it. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how Dr. King had to deal with adversity and had to deal with the daily uh, circumstance of his situation and his leadership that he had attained. Um, the laws that he really felt were unjust, he dealt with them with civil disobedience and that goes like this, which means a refusal to comply with certain laws or to pay taxes and fines as a peaceful form of political protest. So when you say about breaking unjust laws, Dr. King didn't do this in a violent way, he didn't do this in a in a way that really created more problems. It was really a peaceful way and, and, and a great way to really invoke change that he did. Um, Dr. King was also, you know, as we all know, involved with the Montgomery bus boycott movement. Um, it was a 385 day campaign of uh, that cause. Dr. King was uh, arrested. Uh, he had a four day trial. Dr. King was uh, represented by eight lawyers. Uh, the head lawyer was Fred Gray. Um, and he also had 31 witnesses testify on his behalf. Uh, one of those witnesses, her name was Stella Brooke, and she testified that her husband was killed. Her husband was in an argument with the bus driver. Uh, the bus driver um, called the police. The police got involved somehow, and the police ended up killing him. So, you know, when you think about the circumstances, when you think about the Montgomery bus boycott, you know, I don't think people, at least I don't think a lot of people don't comprehend that this was a life and death situation uh, for a lot of people. This wasn't just really about uh, fair seating. This wasn't about where you enter on the bus. This wasn't about how much the, the fares cost. This is really a life and death situation. And ultimately, uh, I'm so happy that Dr. King got involved and really we have the change that we have now. Um, I wanted to also highlight another uh, arrest, another indictment that Dr. King received in 1960. And this was for uh, tax evasion and tax fraud. Uh, in 1956, he was charged to uh, with fraud uh, in an amount of about 1700 bucks uh, overall um, for not filing it correctly or not really having it be applied on his taxes in some form or fashion. And in 1958, um, uh, he was also charged in uh, not um, really fully reporting that he made about $45,000 within that year of 1958. Uh, obviously, throughout that whole trial, um, Dr. King represented himself and, and testified on his own behalf and did some different things with his team. And uh, he was found not guilty and not subsequently released. But, you know, that wasn't because of just him and his team alone. Um, the Kennedys had to get involved. They made some calls to the judges. They got him out on bail and really was an integral part of probably changing history, probably for their own gains, because I know that they were looking for the black vote at that time. It was a very highly contested uh, political race for the Kennedys. And I believe, in my opinion, that that intervention really dictated uh, a lot of what Dr. King was able to get accomplished uh, subsequently following his arrest in the 60s. So I just really wanted to highlight a couple different little situations Dr. King was dealing with and give you a real field perspective on, on some of those arrests, those 30 arrests that uh, he's known for. And, and just to really highlight that a lot of those rest, uh, arrests weren't intentional uh, uh, situations where he was going against his moral responsibility. He was actually a victim uh, uh, for who he was and for what he was about. And it's a great stories to see and really experience and understand once you get a chance to really break them down and really appreciate Dr. King and some of the great things he was able to accomplish after the fact. GOD Worldwide, this is Chuck Grigsby. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I can't wait to share more with you for the month of October on the King Project. And I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you so much and take care.